This video will be all about chapter 13 which centers on gene therapy or stem cells. At the end of the video, it is expected for you to be able to comprehend the introduction to gene therapy, definition of gene therapy, objective of gene therapy, how gene therapy works, types of gene therapy, and issues concerning gene therapy. Gene therapy is an experimental treatment or prevention strategy that employs genes. The gene works through various processes that involve replacing a disease-causing gene with a healthy copy of the gene, an activation of a disease-causing gene that isn't operating correctly, and introducing a new gene into the body to aid in the fight against the disease. In the future, doctors may be able to cure an illness by putting a gene into a patient's cells rather than needing medications or surgery. Gene therapy is a medical specialty that focuses on genetically altering cells to provide a therapeutic effect or heal illness by repairing or rebuilding damaged genetic material. The objective is to change the genetic code of the patient's disease-causing cell and then restore normal conditions to that cell. Viruses that utilize their biological capabilities to penetrate the cell and deposit genetic material are routinely used to transfer genetic material. Gene therapy can be helpful to treat both inherited genetic illnesses and acquired conditions. Now that we already have a background with what gene therapy is all about, let us dwell into how gene therapy works. The disease-causing genes are replaced or inactivated in gene therapy. It involves the introduction of new genes into the body to treat a specific illness in some situations. Doctors transmit a healthy copy of a gene to cells within the body using gene therapy. This healthy gene may replace a mutant gene, inactivate a mutated gene, or introduce a whole new gene. These beneficial genes are delivered into cells using vectors, which are carriers. In the majority of cases, the vectors are non-pathogenic modified viruses. Certain bacteria or circular DNA molecules can also serve as vectors, like plasmid DNA. Additional ways for packaging and delivering genetic materials such as nanoparticles, encapsulating lipid molecules, and using electric currents are also being researched. Vectors are introduced into the body by injection or intravenous IV infusion. In certain circumstances, doctors extract cells from a patient, add vectors in a laboratory, and then inject or IV infuse the vector-containing cells back into the patient's body. Let us now proceed to the types of gene therapy. The two forms of gene therapy treatment are somatic cell gene therapy and germline gene therapy. Somatic cell gene therapy entails taking blood cells from a person who has a genetic condition and inserting a healthy gene into the faulty cell. It centers on the transfer of genetic material or RNA into an appropriate cell type or tissue that affects the cell's gene expression pattern to achieve a therapeutic effect. On the other hand, when DNA is delivered into the cells that create reproductive cells in the body, such as eggs or sperm, it is referred to as germline gene therapy. This sort of therapy enables the repair of disease-causing gene variations that are inherited from generation to generation. As you can see in the illustration, when parents have genetic disease, the zygote with mutant gene will result to an embryo with genetic disease and have a baby with genetic disease. However, with germline gene therapy, the embryo with genetic disease will be treated in a cell culture. After that, the therapeutic gene will be inserted in the virus vector, and the genetically modified cell from the culture, as well as the inoculated egg cell, will result to a genetically improved zygote and have a genetically improved embryo, thus causing a healthy baby. Looking into the issues with gene therapy, 
Even though gene therapy has made great progress in recent years, it still poses serious safety concerns. The insertion of a healthy gene causes a risk that wouldn't be seen until it's reflected in the patient's body. One of the most significant contrasts between gene therapy and traditional small molecule medications or other biological products such as protein therapies is that gene therapy is difficult to discontinue once it has been supplied. The resources used in gene therapy are far off and it would cost a lot of financial resources if things wouldn't work well. It's also too early to say how long a gene therapy's effects will persist. As much as many scientists are on a quest to perfect gene therapy, it would still take a long period of time before things get certain. Far too few people have received gene therapy for an extended period to determine whether it has any long-term dangers. In conclusion, the prevalence of gene therapy has been one of the breakthroughs of science and technology which will serve as a stepping stone to more remarkable medical discoveries. Although the probability of applying gene therapy to medical treatment is reasonably low due to the financial and resource sustainability concerns, researchers are confident with its potential to aid us in future medical endeavors.